So welcome to the Finnish Football Show. Today, it is our absolute pleasure to welcome a woman who was an integral part of the Helmerit squad that recently qualified for Euro 2022 and ever present in that campaign, a tough tackling defender who chipped in with two goals, three-time Nystan Sormann Cup winner, two-time Nystan Liga Cup winner, a Kanselainen Liga and Dam Allsvenskan champion. Welcome to the Finnish Football Show, Emma Koivisto. Thank you. Tervetuloa. First of all, Emma, thanks so much for, for joining us. Um, we know you have a, a, a busy schedule with your club, Brighton and Hove Albion, so um, we really appreciate you taking the time of your Sunday afternoon to um, to stop and chat with us, so thanks for that. Yeah, and thank you for the invitation to join your oh. podcast show. <laughs> Of course, of course. Um, I guess there's uh, there's only one place to start, really, and that's to say uh, a huge, massive congratulations to you on the uh, qualification of Helmerit for um, Euro 2022. The um, the way in which you guys qualify from your group, a, a, a tough group, winning seven of your eight games is and conceding only two goals in the process is something that you, as as a, a defensive minded player, um, you must be very, very proud of. We recently spoke to your your squad mate Paula Mulawaya, and she told us that from the very very start she was she was full of confidence for for qualification and and um, can you tell us how how you felt personally after being drawn in a in a group with the likes of Scotland and Portugal? Were you also confident, or did that confidence grow as as the campaign went on for you? Uh, yeah, of course we were quite happy with the draw that we got that we. We first of all that we got Scotland from the first group, so there could have been many even better teams to play against. So we were happy with that, but of course we knew that it was going to be challenging to qualify for the Euros, and I think that we did even better than we expected. <laughs> first, it's um, yeah. I mean those. Those two teams I mentioned, Scotland and Portugal, it, it was uh, they're, they're kind of, I guess, Scotland, you could say, maybe not so much now, but is a traditional kind of powerhouse of the women's game. So the way that you guys, um, the way that you guys went in that group is 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 really amazing. I mean, you started the campaign with those huge wins over Cyprus and Albania. And um, as I mentioned, you only conceded two goals throughout the entire campaign one of which was an own goal against Albania and the other was a penalty in the 1-1 with Portugal. Um, you guys must have been very pleased with this as a, as a defensive unit to, to keep those goals against it so so small, you know? Yeah, I think that's one of our biggest strengths that we, we defend really well and we play as a team. And I think we are a team that fights fights a lot and like I think we showed in these qualifications that we really wanted to qualify for the Euros. Yeah. Is that something that you guys like specifically work on? Like I mean particularly in the Portugal game particularly like so the Portuguese looked really quite technical and you guys were fantastically aggressive. I mean they were they were having a horrible night like on the on the ball. Is it something that you kind of dedicate time to in training? Yeah, I think we have spent a lot of time to work in our defensive game. Like, it's also that if if a team defends well, it's easier to attack after that. So I think it it has been a main focus in our game in in recent years. Yeah, I think um, some of the some of those Portuguese ladies who had probably went home with uh, some bruises in their shins or or something like that. It was um, it certainly was a uh, an aggressive performance from you guys. And fair enough, you know that's um. That's what wins you the game at the end of the day. So, yeah, it was um, whatever you need to do. I mean, the, the draw against Portugal saw Linda Salstrom score um, an injury time injury time goal to give us a bit of a bit of a taster of what was going to come later on in the campaign. As that went on, those those um, late goals became a bit of a feature of um, of you guys' games. But there's a there's a certain, as Mark alluded to, there's a certain tenacity about this Helmerich side, and um, and the feeling there's a feeling that anything can happen until that that whistle goes is that feeling of belief is that is that with you guys in in the squad as well you know like keep on going until until the whistle yeah i think it also comes from our like team spirit or team atmosphere we we really are a team right now and we we have so good spirit inside the team and we really enjoy playing together and like it doesn't matter who is on the field 
it's also like the substitutions and all the staff members who are really supporting the players who who are on the field. So we we just have so good atmosphere in the in the team. That's something I think um, Mark will agree. We've we've been lucky enough to speak to a couple of the um, Hawkey Act guys as well, and that's something that that they they echo the the team spirit that those guys have built up in in their camp has been um, something that has helped them to their achievements and it's it's pretty cool and and amazing to hear you say that the same the same thing is happening with Helmut you know that um that team spirit the togetherness not only as you said not only with the the 11 players on the field at the time but the full squad and and the full staff and pulling together for that for that achievement and that goal so that's pretty amazing to hear um we can't we can't not mention the crazy ways in the crazy way in which you guys won in Edinburgh against Scotland. Um, Scotland looked to be pressing for uh, pressing for a winner, but you guys were so resilient in defence. And then when the ball broke and was was launched forward into the into the stride of of Sub Amanda Rantanen, it was um, she somehow managed to to score the winner with her with her face. I mean that really gave us the feeling that the um, the Euros were within touching distance. I mean. First of all, what was what was that like seeing that goal go in? And and second of all, how did you manage to to stay focused after after such a great great win away in Scotland and and keep your mind on the task that you had against Portugal? But yeah, first let's talk about that Amanda Rantanen goal, please. Yeah, I think that 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 was the craziest goal I have ever seen or experienced. <laughs> <laughs> it was just something that you don't see every day <laughs> every day in football but yeah it doesn't matter how you how you score goals it it, <laughs> it counts as the goal like every every else goal so yeah that was amazing that's it we said to um we said to Paula when we spoke to her we was like what what was same question you know what was that like she said um she said she just couldn't believe it the way the way that it went in and then we said like all that because obviously we we were watching and all the pictures that came afterwards it was amanda was looked like she was in tears we wasn't sure if it was from the pain of the ball in the face or tears of joy that she had scored that winning goal but obviously we we hope the latter but um yeah so did um how, how after that amazing win how did you manage to keep a lid on on your happiness and stay focused for that upcoming portugal game um, I think during the whole qualifications, we had been just focusing on one game at a time. So we kind of like forgot forgot what was uh, going on in the past and just focused on the game. And yeah, I think that's why we managed to get the result that we wanted. It's a, it's a pretty amazing mentality to have. Like us as fans, we tend to get a bit carried away. I mean, we don't have to worry too much about that professionalism that you guys do. But, um, you know, we can get we can get all party and carried away and you guys straight away after an amazing win you're just like okay forget that now we need to focus on the next one so the professionalism that you guys show is is absolutely unbelievable so again kudos for that so yeah going on to the next game against Portugal sorry it was uh, another another late Cinder, Linda Salstrom strike that um, that saw you win that one the goal that ultimately won the game but again that this the defensive display was was absolutely remarkable and you guys obviously had the um Rock solid Tinja Rika Korpela in, in goal behind you. Um, as a, as I would describe you as a as a modern defender who likes to likes to get forward. So um, I, I don't know if you would agree with that, but does it give you license to to get forward when you know that you have someone of the quality of um, Tinja Rika there behind you in the goal? Yeah, of course, it's really important for a team to have a keeper that you can really trust, and she's also like communicating really really much during the game so that helps the back line a lot and also like the rest of the back line helps uh like you can trust that they handle the attacks if if you have been attacking and you are out of the back line so yeah I like to go forward and I I'm happy that in our national team that that's uh possible is um so would you say that um Tinareka is the the biggest talker on the pitch, or is there there's some other some others who are who are don't mind to um, talk and and keep you guys focused? Um, yeah, of course, Tini plays a big role in that. She's a really experienced player, but I think it's like 
all of the players take responsibility of that in the uh, on the field. So I think it's like all of the players who are who are taking part of that. There's um, obviously it's uh, we're living in some crazy times at the moment. We're still um, got this Corona thing going on, and uh, you know you guys have had to play in empty stadiums. But the one um, the one interesting thing from from those games in empty stadiums that you get a little taste, you can hear what the players are saying and and on all, and hear from some of the coaching staff. The the TV picks up some of those some of those shouts. So um, at least you know there's one one thing that you can just pinpoint. It's a shame to not be there in the stadium, but um, but yeah, it's quite interesting to hear those shouts. But as we said, you you like to you like to maraud forward up the pitch, and your forward play saw you rewarded with. Two goals through the campaign, um, both coming against Cyprus. Do you um, do you get as much joy from scoring a goal as you do from a crunching tackle or or, or a defensive defensive tackle that saves a goal? Which is which is the the best feeling for you? Um, it's hard to say. Maybe like the goals are like a more rare situation that happens to me so maybe i enjoy those moments uh, even more because those mm. doesn't happen every day <laughs> well you know it's um two two goals in a qualification campaign is not a bad return for a, a defensive player so um yeah you did you did okay there um, yeah, and you had you had me scratching my head when I think it was it was Olga who Olga Artinen who cut the ball back from the uh, for the Cyprus goal in the last game, and you popped up. Well, that would have been about ten yards out in the opposition <laughs> box to put it away. <laughs> I mean, do you not get like does does Anna give you like license to kind of rush like uh, up the pitch, or is that just a spur of the moment kind of thing? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just something that I. I, I do. It doesn't matter what the coach says. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to cut that bit. <laughs> she listens to this, you know. <laughs> oh, dear. So, um, yeah, we saw from the celebrations after the uh, Portugal game how much it means to, to all of you guys to be going to the Euros, um, especially after missing out last time. Can you um, just try to describe, describe your feelings as you, you watched... Linda's looping shot hit hit the back of the net, knowing that that was the goal that, that sent you to the Euros. Um, we we I've watched that I've watched that goal a couple of times, and you um, you yourself you're, you're you're getting you're thinking about getting forward for that just in case just in case that one doesn't quite make it, and I can you know see you looking to get forward. But um, yeah, what was what was that like? Just from your position on the pitch, just seeing that goal loop over the Portugal goalie, and knowing that that was the one that sent you sent you to the Euros. Yeah, that was just amazing. It was a great shot from uh, Linda, and it it like felt insane. It was hard to believe that we actually managed to score, and yeah, it felt amazing. But at the same time, I felt really empty. It was like I didn't even know what to think. We just all ran there and hugged Linda, and she she was on the bottom of the pile that we made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like um. We used to have in in, um, in Britain in schoolyards. We used to have this like bundle game, and it kind of reminded us of one of them where the guy at the bottom is like struggling to breathe and stuff. So yeah, it was. Um, but you know, it was amazing to see. It was it was it was pretty cool. But um, yeah, it's, it must have been. It's a yeah, an it's, amazing feeling. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's so rare. Like like crunch game. Last minute stoppage time, edge of the box, and it, what it was such an unbelievable lob. Like it's one of the ones like, so we were obviously watching it at home with the kids, and we were off the sofa, and there was popcorn flying all over the place. Like it was just bedlam for us. It was it was fantastic. It's ah, ah to be fair, the, the popcorn the popcorn probably landed on the floor before the ball hit the back of the net because it just seemed to take ages did, to yeah. fly through the air. Yeah. Everyone was like. But no, it was um, it was absolutely amazing, and each and every one of you deserves massive congratulations for that achievement. Mm. And um, you know, we really hope that and pray that fans will be back in the stadiums by the time that you you kick off the Euros next summer. Um, so if we go if we go back a bit and and talk about you a little bit more, Emma. I mean, um, I think I'm right in saying that you started out playing football in in Supper Helsinki with your brother in the boys' team. Um, is that right? Where where did your love of football come from, and how did it develop at that young age? Is it because you wanted to play with your brother, or how did that come about? 
Yeah, I started to play in Sapa uh, in a boys team and I played my first six years there. And uh, my dad had also has also played football. So I think like our interest in football comes from there. And of course, because my older brother played football, I wanted to do it too. And yeah, that's how I started to play football. I, I think I joined first my brother's team's uh, trainings and then when Papa created a team for my age group then I started to play there. They, um, those guys at Sapa are really creating a bit of a bit of a stir in the, the Finnish football community at the moment with their they got some crazy fans who are out there with their flares and smoke bombs and singing and noise and flags and it's um, yeah it's really cool it's, it's great to see you know like that Finnish football culture is building and building and building and those guys, um, the Supper Ultras, are, are doing their, their own bit for that. So, um, yeah, kudos to those guys. By the age of 12, um, you were playing in Hoyiko, I think, and um, you were in the already in the senior team at 16. Was, was football as a professional career at your mind in this point, or was that a real possibility for you? Not really. I'm like a person that hasn't really have any goals or dreams. I just have played football because it's fun and <laughs> I have to play and then look like how far I can get. So, yeah, I haven't really thought about it. No, that's, um, I mean, that's that's a, a perfect attitude to, to be able to be at the level you're at and say that you still just play the game for fun is um, is pretty, pretty cool thing to hear, you know, like um, I guess there's lots of, uh, lots of guys and girls who once that, becomes a job for them or, or becomes a, a career. I don't know. Maybe maybe some of the love goes out of it, but to hear you hear you say that you just turn up with your kit and just play for the love of the game is um is commendable. That that's that's amazing. Um I think I'm right in saying you had three years playing senior football at Hall U Core, totaling in around 58 appearances and scoring seven goals. You earned a treble of cup wins with two Liga Cups and uh, and a Swarman Cup. But in 2013, you made the move to Honka in Espo. Um, what was your reason behind that transfer from leaving Hoyiko and going to Honka? Yeah, it was because our head coach, Jutta Rautiainen, she didn't continue in HHK. So it was clear for me that I didn't want to continue playing there too. And it was like many many teammates who changed to Honga from HAK at that time. So then I just ended up there with my friends. Yeah, I mean, um, we know that Honka was, uh, Honka became quite a, quite a force to be reckoned with at, at this time. And um, they were, they were a really good team during that period. Um, it was, uh, I think it was around that time that you, you started to split your time between Finland and, and, and the USA. Um, can you just, Tell us how, how the move to Florida came about and did you go to the States purely for footballing reasons or was there some study or was football just secondary? How, how did that play out? Yeah, it was a really difficult decision for me whether I wanted to move to US or not. It was The coach was contacting me for about two years and asking me to <laughs> join their team, but I was just saying that I don't know if I want to leave home and go to the US, but then I think it was like 99% of me who didn't want to leave home, but then like that 1% didn't want to miss the opportunity to go there. So then finally I decided to say yes to the coach and continue my career in the US. So um, all that all that bugging that that coach did you finally paid off you um, yeah they wore you down and you you eventually went to America but um, how how was that I mean um, you were playing for Florida State Seminoles and um, how was the standard of football when you when you arrived in the US how how was the standard of football compared to what you had been used to in Finland Yeah I think it was a step forward in my football career. I I could see that the tempo was better and the players were more technical than in Finland and also the game was more physical and I think I learned a lot from the tactical point of view. Also, 
like they they had so much money in the school and like all the facilities and everything they were like just insane I think there are no professional football teams in in the women's game who has uh, that good environment that they had in the or they have in the in the US. Yeah, I mean, it's um, we know how serious that um, the Americans take their their college, all college sports. So, yeah, I mean, to hear you say that with the the facilities and stuff, it's um, yeah, I guess it, it figures, you know, like they 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 are so serious about their their college sports, so they're gonna they're gonna make sure that they can give you the best facilities they they can. How was um, how did you like the U.S. football in a side? Like, how, how was the, the lifestyle? And, and did it take you a, a while to adapt or did you just smooth, fit right in? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. First of all, like, it was my first time to live far away from my parents. So I had to really grow as a person and, like, learn to be independent and everything. It was a new culture and new language and everything. My English was really bad at the time. It was even worse than now. So, <laughs> so it was quite a difficult start, but I think like being on the field was the easiest part. <laughs> it was more like the life outside football that was difficult. But yeah, I think uh, football wise, it was, quite easy to adapt there and the coach trusted me from from the beginning and I got a lot of a lot of playing time so it, it felt good from the beginning yeah I mean it's um it's hard enough to to leave home from your parents when they're still just around the corner but yeah to go to the the other side of the world and a whole new culture and language must have been something else so it's um really is an amazing story um as as I said we spoke to um Paula Mulawaya and um she had some really, really great and fond memories of, of Honka in 2017. And she mentioned the, um, the team spirit and the way that that team, that team grew together. Can you tell us what, what you remember of, of that time? And um, how did it feel to, to become a, a champion of Finland back then? Yeah, I can agree with uh, Paula. We really had a good team spirit and we enjoyed playing together. Yeah, the, the year when we were won the Finnish champion, I only played there for the summer, but it was great that like, even though I came there in the middle of the season, all the players were really welcoming and then, and like immediately I felt like being part of the team. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really cool to hear, you know, like, um, yeah, Paula's memories were, were similar. She said, like, the atmosphere was so great and, and Honka were doing so well at that time. So it was um, a really great place to be. And I think you, um, you obviously echo that. I mean, um, but that, that championship winning season, I think, was to, to be your last in Honka because you moved to Sweden to sign for Copperberg's Gothenburg FC. In, um, and that was a, what was to be a, a really, really successful period for your new club. In your, your first two seasons, you were Svenska Cup and winner and um, a league runner-up twice. How did you feel about your own game at that time? And um, did the fact that the Copperbergs were doing so well make it easy to, to just slide into that team? Yeah, I think, uh, or I noticed that uh, the level of the game was even better in Sweden than it was in the, in the U.S. I think it was especially because um, the players were quite young in the US. Like I started playing there being like two years older than the other others who started at the same time than me. So my last year, I felt like the players were quite young there. So I think already the fact that the players were older in Sweden made the game better there. So, uh, yeah, that was a step forward in my career again. And, uh, yeah, I think I developed a lot uh, in Sweden during those three three years. Uh, like you said, we succeeded a lot, and that proved that we had a really good team there. So it was a good environment to play in. I mean, um, I think I think the uh, Sweden is... Um... It really is at, at the, the forefront of, of the women's game. I mean, it, it has been for, for quite quite a while. I think um, 
obviously the women's game is growing in, in many countries and that, that's fantastic. But I think it's fair to say that Sweden has been at the, um, the, the head of that spear promoting the women's game. So it, um, I kind of think it, it, it makes sense for, for the best players to have a, have a period over there in Sweden and test themselves in, in, in that league. Um, your next season in Gothenburg saw you go, go one better from a runner up and uh, you were crowned a, a Damal Svenskan champion. It, it must have been so amazing to to get that medal around your neck and then to put that in your your trophy cabinet along with your um, your Finnish league championship medal like how 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 did that how did that feel you know like double champion in in two two nordic countries it must be pretty cool yeah of course it felt amazing especially uh, after getting two silver medals <laughs> winning the league finally it just felt really good yeah, it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing, you know. Like us, us guys as fans can only dream to what what that feeling is like to get that league championship medal. It's um, it must be it must be something so so amazing. But it's got to be old news for you because you've won like <laughs> everywhere you've been. <laughs> everywhere you've been, you've lift, lifted titles and cups and trophies. Yeah, yeah trophy but... cabinet, trophy cabinets full up. <laughs> Is there room for any more, Emma? There must be room for there must be room for some more trophies and medals in there. Yeah, you can always make more room. <laughs> yeah, or just get a bigger cabinet. You might need yeah. you might need one after next summer. Let's hope so. But um, so yeah, after after that championship appearances in the the women's Champions League followed with with Gothenburg. But now, as we speak to you here now, you're you're here in England, having joined um, Brighton and Hove Albion linking up with your Helmerick teammate, Nora Herom, and um, another former teammate, I think Megan Connolly is there also with you in, in Brighton, who um, played with you in Florida. Um, was it an easy decision to, to come and play in England um, in the WSL after the success that you had had in Sweden? Was it, was it hard to say goodbye to those guys in, in Gothenburg and, and come here in England? Yeah, it was, of course, hard also. I had been there for three years and enjoyed my time there. But at the same time, I felt like I had seen the Swedish league already and I wanted to challenge myself in a new environment. And I think that the English league has uh, grown to be like one of the best leagues in the world. So I think that... Uh, that's uh, going to offer me a new environment where I can challenge myself uh, on a higher level again. So is that what you feel? You feel that the, the level here in WSL is, is another step up? Is, is it, do you feel that from playing the games? You, you, you think that the standards is again a little bit higher? Yeah, the games have been really different compared to Sweden. I think uh, the tempo is even higher than in Sweden. Like the... I would say that the players are not necessarily as technical here, but they're a lot more physical, like everyone are fast and and uh, their endurance are so good. So the game is so much faster. You don't have any time with the ball and all the players are just running and running and running. And that makes the game even more difficult. So I'm kind of proud of the English stereotype kind of coming true of being like sort of a <laughs> thick, heavy tackling, like full paced, not as technical uh, game. It's, it's sort of, I don't know. There's a bit of pride there. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. English football all over. Yeah. Oh dear. But um, your Brighton team have had some some really decent results recently. Um, you claimed a, a hat trick of London club scouts with wins over Chelsea, West Ham, and Tottenham recently. Um, are you personally happy the way that you've settled in and, and the level of performances of your new team? I mean, there's there's no better way to join a join a team than to win, right? So um, how, how do you feel personally about, A, your performance and then the performance of Brighton at the moment? Yeah, I think my start here has been better than I could even have dreamed of. That we have got uh, now three wins in the games that I have played and beating Chelsea in my debut that's just something that you can't even dream about no that's um it's pretty cool I mean um I have to let you into a little secret I'm uh I'm a West Ham supporter so um yeah but you you guys you guys turned them over as well but you know I I um 
I need to support. I need to support the Finns wherever they're playing. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that you won that game too. <laughs> but, um, so for for us, like I'm, I'm based in England. Mark's English, but he's based in Finland. But um, for us, for us English guys, it's um, it's great to see that that Finns are are playing here now in the WSA. It's great to see both yourself and and Nora in um, in in Brighton, and also Timmy is in Everton playing well there. Um, we really look forward, those of us who are based in England, really look forward to getting back into stadium so we can come and watch you guys live and, and, and cheer you on. Can, um, can you try and explain to us about your relationship with the fans, um, how, how you feel about the, the whole empty stadium thing and, and your personal relationship with the fans, especially we're interested, especially with your relationship with the fans of Helmerit? Yeah, it's hard to say uh, about the fans here in England yet because I haven't <laughs> met any of our supporters yet. But um, in the national team, I could uh, see like the difference between not having the audience or having the audience because in I think it was our home game against Scotland that we were allowed to have um, people on the on the crowd. So it was just such. Uh, big difference having people on the crowd and like the atmosphere in that game it was just amazing and then in the next game playing away against Scotland it just felt so different playing in an empty stadium so it made such a big difference having uh, people supporting us in the stadium. And that um, that Scotland away game was in was at Easter Road in uh, Hibernian Stadium in Edinburgh I think and it's I mean it's quite it's a typical old-fashioned British stadium, quite high and compact, but it's quite big, right? So, um, yeah, playing playing there with like no fans, it must have been really crazy and echoey. But as I said, you know, we can't wait till we can come and come and see you guys. And um, we know we know from experience the um, the relationship with that the Hawkey have with have with their fans, and um, we're just looking forward to getting back into the stadium so we can we can ha have that relationship with you guys in the Helmerit as well. So, yeah, let's hope that before too long, we can, um, we can get back in there. Just um, going back to Helmerit, you, you, you played for the national team at youth level, under 17, under 19, under 20. And um, I think I'm right in saying you made your A-team debut around 2012-13. Um, but then after that, you returned to the, the under 19 and under 20 setup. Firstly... How was it to make that A team national national A team debut? And second of all, was there some frustration that you went back to the under twenties after that? Um, I think it was. I got injured when uh, Helmer made it to the Euros last time, so that's why I I played with the youth national team again because I missed the Euros due to the injury injury that I had. Um, so I wasn't like too worried about that, and it was uh, it was actually really nice that I could play those games with the youth national team because we made it to the youth or I think it was under twenty World Cup. So it was yeah. one experience that I wouldn't have wanted to miss. So there was something good that came out of that injury actually. And you, you knew in the back of your mind that as soon as you were fit, you'd be straight back into the, the A national team, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to believe in that. <laughs> sure. is, there, is there a big difference between it? Was it, it was Andre, um, oh, I can never pronounce his surname, but it's, was it was Andre Yeglertz who was the, the manager back in, back in the day when you got your first call up. Is there a big like difference in, in tactics or training or approach between him and, and Anna? I wouldn't say that there there is that big difference. They were both Swedish, so they had like <laughs> yeah. the same cultural background at least. Yeah, fika um, fika before training and after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they were they have been quite similar. I would say that Anna Signal has been even more positive than Andrea Jäglund. So I think she has boosted our self-confidence and created the good atmosphere that we have had in the team now. 
So you yourself now are a, um, a first team regular. Um, you're, you're, you're able to play across the back four as well as in midfield. Um, and you, I, I'm pretty sure that you are one of Anna's first names on that team sheet when she's when she's planning her, her squads and her teams. Do you have a, a preferred position or, or are you just happy to play anywhere that Anna will ask you just for the greater good of, of the team? Um, I prefer to play as a right back. Actually, I hate being on the left. But <laughs> <laughs> and I, Anna knows that, so I can say it here. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but of course, I'm, I'm just happy if I can be on the field. It doesn't matter. I could even be a goalkeeper if that's the only position where I can play. So everything is fine. Mm-hmm. So... Um... As, as we, we talked about Anna Signal a little bit, and we know that she's um, a, co- a coach with absolute vast experience, um, how much of the Helmer success can be attributed to her and her methods? Like, just, you know, touching again what, what Mark said, do you feel that the team and, and you personally have, have developed under her coaching? Yeah, I think one big thing that, she brought in our team is that she was really focusing in the physical qualities that we have she has been improving our like sprint sprinting distance and running and everything I remember when she came everyone was worried that we were going to like forget the football part that we're just going to run but (laughs) now I think in the end everyone is just happy that she was focusing on that because it's true that the physical part is really big thing in football like if you if you can run you can perform even better with the ball so I think that's uh, one big thing that she has brought in our team so first few training sessions the balls stayed in the uh, stayed in the <laughs> shed yeah it was just just running and fitness yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah, we played football as well. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you, you, you're absolutely right. If you're um, if you're fitter than the opposition and you you have more stamina, you're gonna you're gonna go further and get yourself um, more chances to win. And as we've seen, that's um, you guys have done that. So it's uh, it's amazing. And yeah, thank you, thank you, Anna. That's um, <laughs> thanks to her. You guys are, are, are all fit for the ninety minutes or the the ninety four minutes whenever you guys want to start scoring those goals. So, um, yeah, great. That's, that's great to hear. I mean, well, again, Emma, we, um, we want to say a big, absolute, huge congratulations to you and, and all of the Helmerit, and we wish you the absolute very best for, for the Euros next summer. As, um, as we said to Paula, your, your team has inspired a whole new generation of girls and boys to, to play football in Finland and, and to realise that with hard work and dedication, they can... They can reach the top of the game just like you guys have. Um, I think we all want to say from the Finnish football show, we want to say a massive good luck to you for, for next year at the Euros. Um, and also good luck for the uh, the rest of your season with, with Brighton and Hove Albion. And um, yeah, we, we wish you every success, Emma. It's, um, it's been amazing to talk to you. So thanks again for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. So um, yeah, if Mark, you got any got any further questions or anything to add? No, just the same thing. My my girls, they they love you like they love they love you and the Helmreet and the guys. And thank you so much because they like they were off and on for football for like for a couple of years. They're seven and nine, and then uh, last couple of weeks or about a month ago, they just turned hundred percent for the for the Helmreet. So thank you very much for that. You've made my Saturdays a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Great to hear. Thank you. No, you're welcome. So um, yeah. Kitos, Emma. It was um, fantastic to speak to you. And uh, yeah, best of luck with, with everything for the future. Thank you. Well, that was Emma Cuevista. Thanks so much to her for uh, joining us on the Finnish Football Show. I think you'll agree. Amazing stories, amazing dedication. And it just goes to show that, um, yeah, if you put your mind to it and you're prepared to put yourself out there. I mean, she moved to America when she was just, uh, just young to um, play at a better standard. And as you said, Mark, you know, everywhere she's gone, the standard has got higher and she's kept on winning. So, um, yeah, kudos to her. And, and all just because she loves the game. That was yeah. like, it was such a great quote. Like, oh, exactly, man. exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, oh, not too fussed about that turning professional luck or, you know, if, you know, 
when that came, yeah, whatever. I just do it, take my boots and, and do it for the love of the game. So, yeah, it was, um, it was amazing. So I think all that remains to say is um, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us on the latest Finnish football show. And, um, yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark. Moi. Bye. Moi. Bye.